guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, and we all know that it is about classic bodybuilding on this channel. And today we're gonna talk about what they used to do in the 70s and 80s, which is lean bulking. Now to understand what bulking, you know, what lean bulking is, I have to talk about what bulking is in general. And that is basically to add weight during the off season when you're not cutting in order to gain as much muscle mass as possible. That is the definition of bulking, you know? You want to gain muscle mass during the bulking season or the off season. So what is the difference between lean bulking and regular bulking that we see more and more in the modern bodybuilding era? Now there are many differences, but the most important differences are that when you do a lean bulk, you want to gain as much muscle mass as possible while keeping the fat gain at a minimum. So what you're looking for is to stay lean, moderately lean during the off season. So you want to add muscle mass, but you don't want to add the fat at least not too much fat. Now regular bulking, as I kind of said earlier, is just to put on as much mass as you can in order to put muscle mass on. But that also means you will gain fat during the bulk. And that is a difference. One type is adding muscle without the fat, minimizing the fat gain. One type is bulking with the fat gain. Now you might think, won't you add more muscle mass during the regular bulk? Sure, that might be true, but there is a big difference again. At the end of a lean bulk, what do you have to do when you're cutting? Not, not very much. When you're at the end of a, a regular bulk, you might be at 20% body fat or over. You will have a stomach sticking out. You won't have a vein popping up, not a striation to be seen on your entire body. So what do you have to do? You have to cut either for a long time or very deeply. And that means that either you crash your calories to a very low level or you uh, have a, maintain a lower caloric maintenance, you know, under your maintenance for a longer period of time. And in both those situations, you will lose more muscle mass than compared to lean bulking when you're cutting then you will only have to cut for a smaller amount of time minimizing the muscle mass loss if that makes sense so why do I stand for lean bulking well first of all you all know that this channel is about classic bodybuilding. What that means is that I look up to the bodybuilders of the 70s and the 80s and even some of the 90s. And what is really striking, especially in the 70s, is that it's almost impossible to find a bodybuilder who did, who did a dirty bulk. You know, only pictures are available, for example, to try to search for Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Zane, Tom Platz being bloated, fat, you know, not looking good. You cannot find them. They always look beach worthy. So lean bulking is the answer in my opinion. And I'm showing you a couple of pictures right now. You now, as you can see right here, you can see Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is his off season the maximum bulk he will ever get to. He, many times he said, I disagree with bulking. You shouldn't bulk in the off season. And I call it lean bulking, but it basically is just maintaining your weight, adding muscle mass, and sure you will uh, look less ripped, less striated, mostly because of also water weight, a little fat gain, but mostly you will still be lean. Now especially if, for, if you try to search uh, Frank Zane off season, you can't find anything. You know, I've got this one picture right here, but it's, you know, it's not really a, a clear picture. It shadows, it's a lot of contrast. But, you know, this is the best picture I could, uh, could find of him in an off season. So the rest of him is all ripped. 
and uh, he won three Mr. Olympia, so he didn't need that, that uh, dirty bulk. Arnold, who won seven Olympias, didn't need that dirty bulk. Um, here's Tom Platz, again, someone who you would think would do a dirty bulk to add all that mass to his legs. I mean, he still, to this day, in the top three bodybuilders with the biggest, best legs. How did he add all this mass? Again. He only did lean bulking. No true bulking required for Show this. Show you a couple of pictures of modern day bodybuilders who are in a dirty bulk. And um, you know, it's clear to see what the difference is. Sure, they are massive. They're big, they're huge. They weigh well over 300 pounds. But to me, when you're looking like this, you're not really living as a bodybuilder. You're more living like someone who wants to put on as much mass as possible. And I've always stated that that's not what my version of bodybuilding is about. It's an art, you know, it's sculpting your physique. And you cannot sculpt something that you cannot see when it's under a layer of fat. And the lean or the off season is meant to actually sculpt your physique uh, most effectively because when you're cutting it's, it's pretty difficult when you're in a caloric deficit of course because then you cannot add muscle only if you're genetically blessed and doing other stuff. So now to the point of what this video is about how to lean bulk. How do you lean bulk? Well the first thing that you have to do and it's simply going to have to be this way is um, Calculate your caloric needs. What do you need for your body to maintain its weight? That's the first thing you have to know. How do you do this? Well, the official method that I use because I study nutrition and dietetics is use the Harris and Benedict formula. It may sound difficult, complicated, but it is not. Simply Google this term, Harris and Benedict, you can see it right here. Google it, and I put it in the description as well, the link to this formula. And all you have to fill in is your height, your weight, and your age, and whether you're a male or a female. And at the end of the formula, it will give you uh, a certain number of calories. And this is the amount of calories that you need to live. So if I would be sitting right here, not doing anything, closing my eyes, sleeping, the number that you're seeing right there, that is the amount that you need to maintain your body as it is. So I'm going to be using myself as an example. So I filled in the Harrison Benedict formula. I used my weight of 110 kilos, about my age of 23, and my height of 189 centimeters. You can also, in the link that I provided below, use the imperial measurements, you know, inches, pounds. But anyway, the calculation gives me the following solution 2361 that is what I call the basal metabolic rate that's the base rate of which your body burns calories if I would sitting here I would burn that amount of calories every single day so if I didn't eat that I would lose mass regardless so this is of course not the final number you have to account for the things that you do, you engage in, that your body uses energy for. And that is what is called the activity factor. Now this is mostly an estimate, but don't ever go too high. There are a couple of activity factors. So first you have your basic metabolic rate. Mine is about 2300. And what I'm seeing right here, for example, if you are sedentary, little to no exercise, you only calculate it times 1.2. No, if you are more active, for example, like me, I work out uh, six to seven times a week, you know, the seven times usually cardio or some weaker muscle group. Um, but what you do then is you guess what your activity factor is. Um, you can see the list right here, pick one that suits you most and be honest be honest which one suits you the most for me it's the 1.725 so 
So what I do is I multiply the 2300 times the 1725 and this is a result. So the result is 4070 calories. Now this is an estimation as every calculation will ever be about this. An estimation of the amount of calories that you burn, right? So every day I burn this amount of calories to maintain the way that I look right now. Then comes the lean bulking part. When you want to lean bulk you want to add more mass to your body as it is right now. So what do you do? You add more calories. And this again is a part of the equation that many people get wrong or overestimate. And that is the difference between dirty balking and lean balking. This very step. So the difference is that usually you hear when you want to bulk add 500 calories to the calories that you need to maintain your body weight. So for me that would be almost 4600 calories every single day. And when I would do that I would probably gain more than a pound a week. If you bulk for three months you would gain like between 12 and 15 pounds. And I'm telling you, maybe one or two pounds, no, no, one pound, maybe not even, that is muscle. The rest is water and fat weight. And you'll have to lose everything but that one pound during the cutting period. And guess what? During cutting, you will lose some of that one pound of muscle anyway. What we have to remember about bodybuilding, guys, nothing happens fast. Nothing happens overnight. That's why I don't like this cutting, the, these cutting and bulking cycles, expecting to gain a miraculous, magical amount of weight every time. It is about this. Not that, not this. Bodybuilding is about this. Slowly going up, never going down. And that is why I think lean bulking is the best way to go. So I choose to add. 250 calories above your the calories that you need every day so for me that will be about 4320 calories with this amount I'm able to maintain a fairly lean body weight while building muscle because I'm in a caloric surplus eating more calories than I need and the more calories I try to convert those extra calories into muscle mass as effectively as I can. Now to make this plan work you don't need to only look at the calories you need to look at the protein you need to look at the fats and the carbs. So right now I'm also in the lean bulking stage well you know this is basically my shape when I'm lean bulking Damn. look that's what I mean when I talk about the peak Close grip, close grip curls. Close grip. Close grip. Close grip. Hey. Anyway, that's what I look like uh, when I'm lean bulking. This is the maximum amount of unstriatedness that I'm going to show. Right? The reason why I think lean bulking is important for everybody to do is it's easier it's not as expensive you don't have to eat as much and you won't be as disappointed when you cut down you know only if you're genetically gifted you can get away with dirty bulking and then cutting and then not expecting to lose a lot of muscle mass but that simply doesn't apply to 99.99% of the population. Not even to me. Well, I never did a dirty bulk, but I'm not even going to try it out. Because I do notice that it's very hard to stay as full as you're used to when you're cutting. Especially cutting for a long time. So now that we have calculated the amount of calories that I need, you can do this for yourself, obviously, following the exact same steps that I did. And I will put everything in the description. 
And I don't want to make this video short because I, did, I do think it is important to really explain the reasoning behind it. And I don't want to make this a five minute video that's to the point, no. Everything I say is for the amount of calories that we need. For me, it's 4,300. Well, I like to just round it off to a uh, hundred or a fiftieth. For example, 4,300 or 4,350, whatever lies closest, because those small differences, that doesn't matter. It's always an estimation. So what you have to do, now that you have those calories, is a very important thing that you have to do is every week you have to weigh yourself. If you gain more than 500 grams, I'm doing this in grams because, you know, or a pound, if you gain more than this, lower your calories with about 100 or 150. And decrease your carbs by doing this. is a great segue actually into the macros. Now I cannot be specific because everybody is different. But what I always recommend, as Arnold did, one gram of protein for every pound of body weight. Don't bother with lean body mass or anything, body weight. Don't, you know, just be just an estimation this is. Unless you're overweight and weigh 400 pounds, obviously, but no one watching this channel who wants to lean bulk will weigh that much. So, I weigh about 240. Let's just even the number right there. I have to get in 240 grams of protein. And usually people stop at protein. Equally as important is the fats, the healthy fats. So you have one gram of protein for every pound of body weight, but it doesn't stop with the protein. So the macros of the fat, right? The amount of fat you need to take, I like to have around two thirds of the protein you take. And for me, that is around 160 grams of fat. Uh, two thirds of 240 is 160 grams of fat. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't that too much, guys? That's a lot of fat. Am I gonna get fat? Am I gonna lose my radiations here? Is this gonna go away? No, it is not gonna go away. In fact, you need fats to tell your body, hey, I'm getting enough fat in, so you don't need to store it. A lot of people don't understand that there are essential fatty acids just as there are essential amino acids. Essential fatty acids like omega-3, omega-6, you know, alpha linolic acid if I pronounce it right. Anyway, those are the fatty essential acids and you need them. If you don't ingest those for like a couple of years, you die. If you don't ingest the essential amino acids, you die. If you don't eat any carbs starting now, for 20 years on end, you live. So fat and protein, those two things, you have to keep in consideration. The carbs, that's the last thing you have to think about. Now we've got the 240 grams of protein, which is 960 calories. We have the 160 grams of fat, which is 1440 calories. So, now it's time for the carbohydrates. Well, you have to, now that we have the fats and protein right, together they are 2400 calories. So what we have left, after uh, taking away the 2400 from the 4320 that we started with, we have 1920 calories left that we have to fill up with carbs. And if you calculate that, one carb, one gram of carb is four calories. So that is 480 grams of carbohydrates that I need. So we have 480 grams of carbs, 160 grams of fats, 
240 grams of protein. Those ratios, to me, that is what lean bulking is about. Because everybody is different and everybody has different preferences, it is hard to tell you which foods you should eat. But I can give you some guidelines, you know, some general outlines on the foods that are good for you. I showed you an well, I'm showing you an example meal right here. So, right here, what do we have? Well, we have brown rice. We have you know, some vegetables. I add 300 grams of broccoli. That's my personal preference, but it's up to you. And, uh, most importantly, actually, what you guys normally don't add is healthy fats. This is a cashew nut. And I add about 20 grams in this meal. And I also add 15 grams of coconut oil or uh, olive oil, depending on what I choose. And there is 200 grams of codfish in there as well. So and these are the macros of this meal. So this is a great example meal with plenty of healthy fats. A good amount of carbs, a good amount of protein, and in my opinion, importantly also, the fibers from the vegetables, the vitamins, the minerals. So this is a healthy and trust me, a tasty meal because there's also Cajun spices, um, curcuma spices, garlic, etc. in here to make it really tasty. So this is a good example. Other foods that are good for you, well, what is in a meal, for, for example, for carbs, brown rice, oatmeal, Sweet potatoes or regular potatoes are actually good as well. They're all complex carbs. They don't spike your insulin as fast as fast acting carbs. You no, know, the sugar, the white flour. So stick to those carbs and add enough vegetables. Okay, now we uh, did the carbs. Because we want to get the insulin level, we want to keep it stable, guys. Because the higher the insulin level rises, the more chance that you have of increasing your fat storage. Insulin forces nutrients into the body faster at a faster rate, including fat. You know, it primes your body to store more fat during that period of time. So keep your insulin levels stable. And uh, all the food choices that I'm giving here are the best choice within that macronutrient to keep them stable. And they're healthy at the same time for other reasons with vitamins and minerals, etc. Okay, the healthy fats. Food sources for healthy fats are nuts, such as cashew nuts, almonds, walnuts, and all the other nuts, even peanuts, guys. Just buy the unsalted regular peanuts. They're good for you. Um, you know, because a lot of the peanuts are uh, either coated or salted or added uh, different spices, even dextrose, maltodextrin is added. You don't need all that stuff, just a pure peanut. You can mix them in your food, your, you can eat them next to your regular meal, um, or uh, before you go to bed, slow down, slow down digestion, stuff like that. That's also one of the main purposes of getting fat into your system. Slow absorption causes stable insulin levels, but I'll make a different video about insulin, but it is important to understand the basics, right? The slower the absorption of nutrients in your body, the more, the more likely your insulin levels will remain stable. And stable insulin levels will make it harder for your body to put on fat tissue. Other food sources are Salmon, which is also a great protein source. Salmon has a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, as does mackerel, another fish choice. Also healthy fats, also a nice amount of protein. And uh, then you have avocado, a very healthy, is it a vegetable? I don't know, but it is a healthy one. Avocado. <clears throat> and then we also have the oils. Uh, every meal you should add about 10 to 15 grams of oil and don't go for the uh, hardened plant based oils or the butter stuff like that keep to the coconut oil extra virgin olive oil um, there's even rice oil available as well but make sure to get the high quality one with plenty of vitamin E and now the protein, well that's very simple. I like to eat mostly 
um, fish protein sources uh, and the only way that I use is whey isolate from Cytic Nutrition. I think that's a good isolate and it's pure. All the lactose, all the milk sugar is out of there. Just a pure protein, high amino acid uh, profile. All the essential amino acids are in there. But that's the secondary protein source. The primary protein source to me is for example codfish, uh, just regular white fish, tuna. Um, there's also chicken, there's turkey. This basically all lean. You know, when you eat meat, take the lean meats because the meats that have fat, animal fats from meat, those are saturated fats and those are not good for you. What's better for you is fatty fish, like salmon, mackerel. There's even an option to take tuna that already has olive oil in it, you know, maybe it's easier for some people. If you don't like to prep your food, just take a can of tuna with the olive oil, have the rice uh, next to it and some basic vegetables and add the nuts in. Almost no preparation at all and you're done. Now let's talk about what you can do next to your diet to let the lean bulking process go as smoothly as possible. And that could be, for me, cardio. It is kind of strange to hear doing cardio in your lean bulking phase in the off season. Why would you do cardio? Isn't that counterproductive? You're eating more and you're burning more. No. Actually, when you do cardio, you are able to eat a little more without gaining fat. And I suggest doing post-workout cardio. And uh, on average, I do 20 minutes, about 130 beats per minute. That's the range of the heartbeat, which burns for most people most fat, because fat to burn in your body requires a lot of oxygen when you go too fast your body is not able to keep up with the oxygen demand and it will burn the faster carbohydrates which are much easier to burn and maybe even some protein if you run for a long time. Now there's also uh, high intensity cardio. I've never done it myself but uh, looking at the science that's also good to do but just don't do it for too long of course. But yeah, 20 minutes on the, tre on the treadmill or the elliptical machine or just walking outside would be a great thing to do. And I regularly do it three, maybe four times a week except on leg days in the off season. Why is it important that you do the cardio to lose a little bit of calories each day? Well, this allows you to eat a little more, as I said, and food of everything you can do is the most anabolic substance you can consume. The more food you're able to take in, the more your body is able to build muscle. And that is what you want. So this was the video, guys. I hope you learned something from it. Tell me what you think down below. And I know that it's difficult from this information to create your own personal plan but this should give you input and some insights on how to do it yourself and the whys and the hows and why lean bulking is important for me in regards to classic bodybuilding we're a bodybuilder guys you always want to have a bodybuilding looking body right you always want to look good you always want to be able to build this muscle be healthy look healthy eat healthy no junk food no dirty bulking lean bulking that'll give you much better results overall you will feel mentally better you look in the mirror you always look great even your strength goes up when even that little amount of calories you don't need to weigh 20 pounds heavier to be able to lift a lot more weight trust me I've experienced it myself you get stronger if you eat more than you need your body feels better more healthy has more conditioning more stamina you will perform better in the gym if you keep to this, to this lean bulking plan. But as I said, it may be hard for some people to create an, an, an entirely customized plan and be sure about what they're doing. So as I always have put in my uh, description below the video, my email wesleyvissers at hotmail.com you can email me for customized uh, 
nutrition plans and workout plans and I've helped probably around 100 people by now and everybody is very satisfied um, with the plans I do the basics for you I give you the basics and you can ask me any question you want and I ask you questions in order to make the plans personal for you to tailor the plans personal to your needs um, that's why I ask those personal questions about lifestyle training and nutrition but yeah I hope this video helped you a lot contact me if you want to know more so if you want to look like this or this and not like this or that then this type of lean bulking is for you but guys thank you for watching the cutting video will be uploaded later this week i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to stay golden